what's up guys? Dale Valor here from Modern Valor Dating. Listen, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine a few days back, and one of the things that we were talking about was social conditioning versus how you actually feel about things and really your legitimate perspective. And I thought it was a really interesting conversation. And it got me thinking about social conditioning and and it got me thinking about what do people actually really think, like nature versus nurture and all those types of things. And so how social conditioning may be holding you back, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go really deep into it. We're gonna figure out what really social conditioning is, how to test for it, and to see if it's something that you need to overcome to help you level up or if it's just something that you actually feel and is really a part of your identity, all right? So we're gonna hop into it right now. Let's get it. Number one, how to test for it, all right? So here's the deal, man. Look, there's so many people, they have this like shame or guilt or something that's holding them back and they're like, why do I feel like this? Even though I'm not doing anything wrong, I feel guilty. Maybe it's kicking it with a bunch of girls at the same time. Even though you're being 100% honest with them, which you should be, by the way. Or maybe you just feel shameful in your actions or your intentions. Even though you're being upfront, you're being honest, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not hurting anybody and it's well received and accepted. You still feel this. Why is that? Well, it's not because you are doing anything wrong to somebody else. That's where your mind goes because that's how we associate guilt is that I did somebody wrong. It goes against my moral compass. Therefore, now I feel bad about it. All right. But you're not doing that. So what is the cause? It's going against something about you. It doesn't really have anything to do with one of the, uh, the girls that you're kicking it with or, or whatever else. It doesn't have anything to do with that per se. That's just kind of the release valve for it. What it ultimately boils down to is how you feel about yourself. See, if you're feeling guilty, it's because of one of two things. It's either because you're socially conditioned to feel bad about something or because you actually really do think that and feel that and you're going against your own code of ethics or your own moral compass. So what you need to do, the way to test for this is look back. Okay, firstly, Am I doing anything wrong? Because if you are and you feel guilty for it, okay, that makes all the sense in the world. But if what you're doing intrinsically isn't wrong, is it because I'm being social conditioned or was socially conditioned, maybe growing up, maybe in a family environment, maybe they were deeply religious or whatever the case might be, or um, just uh, socially, social norms, whatever the case might be. Did that happen to me? Was I socially conditioned, yes or no? If the answer is yes, yes I was, okay, now look at it again and see like, okay, if that is the case, then I need to do something about not being socially conditioned so I don't feel guilty about things that I'm not even doing wrong. Okay, that's if you're socially conditioned. If it's not, now you know what your code of ethics are, what your moral compass is. And it's up for you to live by a code, right? I believe as a man, we should all have our own moral compass and our own code of ethics. And if you go against your own code of ethics, you should feel wrong because those are there for a reason for you because you put them in place ultimately, consciously or unconsciously, you put those in place. So look, that's the way to break it down. That's the way to test it. All right, we're gonna get it number two, let's go. Number two, stretch your comfort zone. So like I said in the previous tip, man, if you have been socially conditioned and you can recognize that, you can realize that, then what you need to do is step out of the things that make you so comfortable. See, you are in a bubble, you're insulated. It's time to get out of that. Now you may feel some pangs of guilt. Why? Because you're used to that comfortable comfort zone. You need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I think of it like this. Okay, so say you rescued a dog. You're good to it, you're nice to it, and the dog's a great dog, except for when you pick up a broom to sweep the floor, the dog cowers, and he goes and whimpers in the corner, and he's just, you, you can tell just by his body language that he's afraid. Okay, so what's the deal? 
Well, that's the telltale signs of that dog was getting beat by somebody with a broom, okay? And so he is conditioned to behave like that due to the environment that he was used to. Even though you have no intention of beating this dog with a broom, you know that, but he doesn't know that. And that's why he feels like that. And you know what? He may even feel guilty. He might even say to himself, I'm a bad dog. I deserve to get beat and here it comes. You know, about to get beat now because I'm a bad dog. This is no different than you. You have been conditioned to react, to behave, be in an environment and feel a certain way depending on the situations that are going on around you. So what I would tell you to do is, Go to those environments, do it purposefully, because if you do, that comfort zone is gonna grow and stretch over time. It's not gonna be immediate. It's gonna take a while before you're able to really stretch that comfort zone out. Much like that dog, it may take a long time, man, for that dog to start really feeling comfortable with you sweeping the floor. But at the end of the day, at some point in time, the dog's gonna be okay with it because he's gonna realize, you know what, I'm not a bad dog, I'm not gonna get beat, I don't deserve that, and my master's a good master and he's not gonna beat me for nothing. Okay, so he's gonna realize that and so will you. All right, we're gonna get to number three, let's get it. Number three, don't swing the opposite way. What do I mean by that? Well, look, you know, this is gonna fly in the face a little bit of what I just said in the last point, but I want you to understand that there's a little bit of a balance here, okay? What some people do is, they're like, okay, let me stretch my comfort zone, so I'm gonna go all in. You know, like, I'm gonna, uh, say, say for instance, maybe going to a, a strip club, you feel guilty by doing that, okay? And, and inherently, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? so. I'm gonna go to the strip club. Well, not only do you go to the strip club, but you go to the strip club five nights a week and you're spending all your money and you're getting all these lap dances and you're doing X, Y, and Z and you know maybe paying girls in the champagne room. You know what I'm talking about. Don't swing the complete and utter opposite direction. There's a middle ground. It's kind of like a pendulum, right? It's like, you know, you were so far this way now you let go of it and it's gonna swing the complete and opposite other direction. Don't let it go to that extreme. Try to find that balance in the middle where it's not just like overwhelming and you're trying to like completely change who you are as a person because you're like, oh, okay, you know what? I was indoctrinated in something or, um, you know, I, I was just overexposed to things as a kid, and so I've got to like knock that out completely. That isn't the case, man. You got to do it with a little temperance, with a little balance involved. I grew up in the church, man. One thing that you would observe a lot, or at least this was my observation, and some of you guys may know what I'm talking about, pastor's kids. Pastor's kids, a lot of times, were like the worst kids. Why? Because there was so much influence and so much put on them to behave and act a certain way. They were indoctrinated. They were socially conditioned to behave because like, they were almost as a representation of the pastor themselves. And they would act out and they would act crazy and things like that just because as a, as a pushback mechanism, right? And so that's kind of what I'm talking about is that you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be that guy that just goes in head first and just completely, you know, potentially could destroy your life, all right? So, you know, do it with a little bit of temperance, do it with a little bit of balance, and see really where your comfort zone is, and then push against it, stretch it little by little. All right, we're gonna get number four, let's go. Hey guys, wanna take this quick time out just to remind you, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, man. We want to be able to bring you this information as quickly as possible. If you're getting value out of it, man, it costs you nothing to subscribe to the channel, but it means a lot to us because we can keep going, we can keep moving forward. So make sure you do that. Also, give us a thumbs up, man. Drop a comment in the comment section on things that you want us to cover, you know, or whatever the topic of the video is about, chop it up with us, man. Let us know what you think, you know? So drop that comment, share it with somebody that you know needs to hear it. Also, the last Saturday of every month, 
we do a live Zoom event. We will have it linked up here. And what I want you to do is register for that, man. It's 100% free. This month, we're going to be talking about social circle game. So what does it mean to build out a social circle? How you can do that? Why is that important? We're going to give you all those answers, man, and show you step by step how to do that for it to work for you. Remember the last Saturday of every month. All right, we're going to hop back into the video. Let's get it. Number four, don't regress. This is a huge pitfall that I see guys fall into is to where they start trying to change things about themselves, trying to eliminate a lot of that social conditioning. And you know, then they stretch it way too far like I was talking about in the last point. And then they backtrack and they regress and they became the exact same person that they started with. It almost comes full circle. And so watch out for that, man. You know. What you are going to have to do is understand that you have to keep a gauge on your emotions. You have to have some kind of barometer there, a way of measurement to see how do I feel. And it sucks and you probably feel like, man, you know, this is shitty because a lot of guys don't have to deal with this kind of thing. And they don't have to like have to play these mental gymnastics every time that they go to do something. And you know what? You're right. It does suck. A lot of guys don't have to do that. But guess what? That doesn't change the reality that you do. So make sure that you're keeping an eye on your emotions, how you feel about things. You know, if the guilt is completely overwhelming, that could be a good thing depending on the situation. If it's just bothering you a little bit, that's okay. That means your comfort zone is stretching somewhat and you're little by little not being as socially conditioned as you once were. Okay, we're gonna get to number five, let's go. Number five, live by your code. A little bit earlier in the video, we were talking about having a code of ethics or a moral compass, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it. It's all kind of the same thing. All right. But here's the deal. All right. Have that. If you're not socially conditioned, if you were never socially conditioned, have a code of ethics for yourself that you live by, that you say, these are the things that go with my code of ethics, these are the things that fly in the face of my code of ethics. And I will not, under any circumstances, compromise who I am, what I'm about, what I stand for, and what I believe for a short-term exchange. You know, I'm not going to sell myself short to get in good with a girl. I'm not going to sell myself short for, you know, momentary pleasure. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the thing, man. You are more valuable than that. Your code of ethics should be strong enough to fly in the face of anything like that, man. So, definitely live up to that. And listen, I would be interested to know what your code of ethics are. What are some of the things that are non-negotiables in your life that you just refuse to compromise, that you refuse to give into, all right? You know, in this video, we talked a lot about stretching your comfort zone. And a little while back, we did a video going really, really, really deep on how to stretch your comfort zone. I'm giving you a bunch of tips, ideas, things like that to really make that happen for yourself. So what I want you to do is go to that video, check it out, and start stretching that comfort zone. I will see you there.